God said to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, go on a hilltop, hilltop boy, youth, and uh, look around you. This is the land that I gave you. Then walk. Oh, we go on the top of a hill, we look around, we get to know the place. Then we settled at the place. We are on the way to Metzad Hill, a desolate place between Hebron and Bethlehem. To access the hill, two rules. No women, no interviews. Reaching the hill, we can see a few caravans, some youngsters and sheep, all settled on Palestinian-owned land. This is all part of Israel's new strategy to grab Palestinian land. Driven by a vision of greater Israel and the belief that they are fulfilling a divine mandate, these youngsters follow their leaders blindly. We dedicate a lot of time to educating the young generation to follow the ideology of redeeming the land of Israel. These are a group of racist fascists. who are willing to do anything to impose Jewish supremacy, officially. Duma is a Palestinian city located in the Northern West Bank. In a hot July night, the city became sadly known for one of the worst episodes of settler violence against Palestinians. A few years ago in Duma, there was a group of uh, hilltop youth, settlers, who went to attack the village like they do in many other nights. And they put fire on one of the houses that was inhabited. And the house set on fire and the parents and one of their, and the baby's son were killed. And the other son was um, rescued alive, but he lost his family. The crime was committed by a group of settlers, but only one was sentenced, Amiram ben Yulial. Itamar Bengver, now the Minister of National Security of Israel, was his lawyer. Itamar Bengver was one of the Hilltop Youth leaders. He arranged many, many youngsters and educated them to be violent and to attack Palestinians. But there is more to this story. Months after the Duma attack, a video emerged showing Israeli settlers dancing frenetically while stabbing a photo of the murdered baby at a wedding party. Itamar Bengver can be seen smiling in the video from the wedding. 
Outside the courtroom, as relatives of the family burned to death entered, groups of settlers greeted them with the chant, where's Ali? Ali's not here, Ali is on the grill. The settler who was sentenced for burning the family to death is a member of the Hilltop Youth. The Hilltop Youth of the settlers are dangerous, are provocative, are hostile, are violent, and they have to be contained. Their ages usually range from their teens to their 20s. Basically, it is the violent part, a very violent part of the settler movement. The hills of the occupied West Bank are their battleground, and price tagging is their calling card. They have sworn to sacrifice everything for a land without Palestinians. Gangs of uh, extreme settlers are raiding Palestinian communities with complete impunity. This is state-sponsored violence. This is violence that is done by groups that could be called militias. <laughs> militias of the Israeli apparatus. These attacks range from destruction to murder. <laughs> they believe that God promised the entire land of Israel from the east side of the Jordan as well to the Jewish people, and that we have to exercise our right for this. And uh, if necessary, we can use uh, violence and power and pull them, push them out. Everybody yeah. knows them as hilltop youth. Yes. Who are they? First of all, uh, if you want to get to know really good, to get to know a hilltop youth, you'll have to get to know me. Daniela Weiss is a very prominent settler, one of the leaders of the settler movement, and one of the most extreme leaders of the settler movement. I have been involved in building, establishing settlements since the 67 war. In 1967, the miraculous uh, war of 67. War in the Middle East. Israeli forces drive spearheads across the Sinai Peninsula, west to the Suez Canal, south to the entrance of the Gulf of Aqaba, breaking the blockade, capturing the west bank of the Jordan River, and occupying... Two o'clock in the afternoon, when I heard the alarm telling that we ought to go to the shelters. And then I understood it was the word of God telling his people, myself, as part of the Jewish nation, that we haven't done enough for redeeming the land of Israel. What if politicians decide that you uh, no, should leave? No chance whatsoever that we will leave here. If it costs us our life, it will cost us our life, and no chance. I mean, if the, the state... If, if they'll have to kill us. We have built here 250 new Jewish communities. In these communities, there live 500 thousand Jews, half a million Jews. And more coming all the time. And in the eastern neighborhoods of Jerusalem, another 350,000 Jews. So we are getting closer to the one million. We will be two million here. No chance whatsoever for establishing a Palestinian state. And it sums up the story we are going to tell you. 
The war on Gaza has been raging for months. Relentless, devastating, brutal. But the Israeli war on Palestinians has a second front. Equally relentless, equally violent. There is a small, less known war that is being waged in the West Bank as well, not only in Gaza. It is lost to the international and domestic public. But what we've seen uh, happening uh, and unfolding in the West Bank is really horrendous. So not only now the uh, settlers are being violent against the, the Palestinians, but uh, they do it uh, with uniform and uh, guns from the army. And they use the power they have in IDF uniform, using IDF weapons uh, to further their ideological goals. And that means going into villages, uh, very aggressively questioning people, threatening people, making it very clear uh, that if you don't move within a certain amount of time, we're going to, uh, we're going to force you to, we're going to harm you in some kind of way. We spent 22 days in the occupied West Bank, meeting the settlers and their leaders. We saw Israel's new weapons and strategies to force Palestinians to leave their land. And we also discovered its surprising allies. The occupied West Bank is a dangerous labyrinth. Yeah. Let's see if it's soldiers or settlers, or settlers that are soldiers. We need the settlers' trust if we want to move around. We try our luck here in the Israeli parliament, where many settler leaders hold seats. We came to meet him. Shalom, Vacham, Kurim Nitzvi Sokot, Met Shloshim Shalosh, Nasri Plus Shesh, Toshav Aishu Bitzar, and Shameshkan Kaber Knesset, Mitam, Flegat Tsionot Adatit, or Baita. And what does he think about settlers' violence against Palestinians? אלימות זה דבר פסול, אלימות זה דבר רע. זו העמדה שלי, וזו העמדה אגב של רוב המוחלט, רובם המוחלט, של היהודים שחיים ביהודה ושומרון. But there's more to his story than he's revealing. צבי סוכות הוא אז אין אקסטרים רייט ווינג, היל טופ יוס, הוא ביקם אי פרלמנט ממבר, which is crazy. And unfortunately and shamefully, he is now a member of the Israeli parliament. But it's like a radical, violent person taking part in uh, intimidation of Palestinians. This is a natural product of the alliance between Bibi Netanyahu and the Messianic groups. 
Next day, he invites us to meet him in the settlement where he lives. Built in Palestinian stolen land, Itzar was and remains one of the most violent settlements in the West Bank, a bastion of messianic Zionism in its most extreme form. Flags and posters lining the road to Itzar proudly proclaim the Zionist presence in the occupied West Bank. There are several Palestinian villages just beside the road, a step away from Yitzhar. They are as quiet as ghost towns, and there is a reason for that. The constant attacks coming from Yitzhar. The Israeli army is here everywhere, protecting the settlers. He is waiting for us. The Israeli settlers plan to seize more land beyond the Palestinian West Bank in Gaza, aiming to restore what they claim are the biblical borders of Israel. The borders of the Jewish state are the borders that were promised by God to Abraham, from the Euphrates to the Nile. But it includes parts of some... Uh, from Syria, from, uh, of course, many, many countries. We have our Bible. This is the only document that matters. We do want to try to do it as much as possible, hand in hand with the nations of the world. But when the nations are too tough with us, then we do have some uh, liberal measures we live by. Just down the hill from the Itzar settlement is Hawara, a target of constant attacks from the settlers. Palestinian media said some 35 homes and 90 cars were torched by some 400 settlers. Hundreds of Israeli settlers attacked the city, setting cars and homes on fire and killing a Palestinian man. A top Israeli official has called for the Palestinian village of Huwada to be wiped out or erased. זה מקום יפה, נחמד, ויש פה בעיה קטנה שיש איזה כמה מאות אלפי אנשים שגרים לידינו שרוצים להשמיד אותנו, אבל חוץ מזה ממש נהדר. Some of the boys came to the town of Hawara and they burned some cars and some shops, but at the, on the edge of the village. They didn't even wound, they didn't even slap in the face. They ju just wanted to react. So uh, if this is to be condemned, I think not. We're near Emanuel's settlement at the northern end of the occupied West Bank. Our destination is a place that Israel is hiding from the public eye. Ah, there it's called Havat Sheorim or Seorim. This is in the middle of nowhere, yeah. See, I promised to bring you to the middle of nowhere, where no one else even knows this exists. Yeah. What we're about to see is the most successful land grab strategy since the 1967 war. This is an outpost, Israel's way to bypass international law. These are what's called outposts. Uh, some of them are really just a caravan on a hill or a little tent or something like that, but some of them just like regular settlement. Shiv. So, now it will be a little house, but this is basically when we came here, we saw the car. Check it. We saw the car, and there is a place for the house, and for the house, and for the house. וזהו, שירותים מקלחת פה, לפתוח. יכול להיות את זה? בעצם בזה, כאילו פה השירותים במקלחת. כי אור לבוקר. One family and a few youngsters, they take a hill top and they start to harass the Palestinians all around it. 
they usually will grow some uh, flocks, sheep, or whatever to go out to the fields and to violently to push away the Palestinians from their farmland. It's not just a few crazy settlers on a hilltop, it's very much with the support of the State of Israel. We're taking entire areas of the West Bank and making sure that they can't become uh, part of a, Palestin a future Palestinian state. I believe in the Tanakh and I believe that the Israel is going to the Israel. This is the promise of Elohim to Abraham. And Israel is the Israel. Israel is the Settlements are considered illegal under international law, but legal under Israeli law. Outposts, however, are illegal even under Israeli law. Yet the state provides them with water, electricity, and security. Our approach as the military is that the moment we have Israelis, Israeli citizens, Jewish settlers, right, we have to protect every settlement outpost in every crazy place. היינו בחוות יתדות שלוש שנים, שם נחשפנו לכל הנושא של השמירה על הקרקעות, ואז, ו, ואז חשבנו על האזור הזה, כי הכרנו אותו, ידענו שזה קרוב לעמנואל, ידענו שכל האזור פה זה אדמות מדינה ושמורת טבע של נחל תנא. The way we make a land to become state land is a very, very, um, I would say, ugly way, not honest. We make it harder for the Palestinians to cultivate their land, and then their land is not cultivated, so, so we can declare it state land. If Prime Minister Netanyahu calls me now and says, Daniela, we need to establish now a new outpost on a strategic hill. Are you ready to go? I am always ready to go to establish a new hill. Not only am I ready, it's my constant dream. From the northern end of the occupied West Bank to its southern hills, we are moving to the settlement of Bat Ayin. Or to be more exact, to a place on the outskirts of the settlement, hidden from public view. But in order to get there, we need to meet him first. Mir Even Tov, one of Hilltop youth leaders in this area. <laughs> יש מאות של נקודות שעלו לשטח בשנים האחרונות, ובאור שהם מבצעים את העבודה, יש עוד הרבה עבודה, אבל נבצע הכל בעזרת השם. אנחנו נוסעים לגבעת אוהביה, שזה מקום שאשתי ואני עובדים עליו כבר שנתיים וחצי. ההר כבר בידי עם ישראל, תרפה גם עוד פרח. Is this the police? No, it's a security of the organization of the this village. David, what's wrong? Hello. 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 ליצור בלאגנים בין הכוחות, אנחנו נעלה למעלה, לגבעה ישנה, לא... אל תצלם את העמדה, אוקיי?
רק אל תעלה מדי עמדה, תעשה לי באמת טובה. תסביר להם, זה בשביל להיות בארץ ישראל, צריך... ארץ ישראל נקנית בייסורים, במיוחד ליהודייה. תרגיל. כן. לא מוכנים, מקסימום. מחכים לטבח הגדול, האמיתי. מי זה פעם מאדום? אל תצלם אבל. What is happening down the hill that they don't want us to film? We were able to get visual evidence with the help of a hidden camera, and this is what they don't want us to film. Settlers receiving military training to terrorize the Palestinians in the surrounding area. חדש יותר, תופס שטח יותר. בדקתי במפות, וראיתי שזו נקודה אסטרטגית, והחלטנו לכבוש אותה. נקודה ממש אסטרטגית פה באזור. כשהיעד זה לעלות פה באיזה... לכבוש את כל הרכס, שזה היה הרכס הכי גבוה פה בגוש הזה. אני חושב שדם ואדמה זה די בא ביחד, כן. אם נצטרך להרוג, אז נהרוג. כל ההר הזה זה בשביל היהודים שיבואו ממונסטי, ככה זה הבדיחה פה בין החבר'ה. אנחנו נגיע גם לשם, כבר הגענו לשם, אבל נגיע לשם גם בתור בעלי הבית. To access this place, we had to accept some rules. One of them, not to film the structure that is being built down the hill by the settlers. However, we were able to film it from a distance. The question is, what are they building? And so, we give it a try. So, uh, this is for security, yes, or, or what is this? Uh, this is for security and for the attack. It's the... נקודת כינוס גם, של צה"ל. כאילו פה, בחטא הזאת, הם פתחו פה, והם מתים ויורדים לכפר כל לילה. The village he refers to is Surif, a Palestinian village. And this is what he talks about. Israeli settlers go down to the village at night to insult and harass Palestinians. to make sure they will leave their land. This police helicopter or military? What? A masok? A masok, yeah. Yeah, they're in the way to Gaza. Gaza is close, close, not far away. When you see the images of Gaza, how do you feel? I'm starting to feel happy. 
צדיק היא חזן הקם. אמר בריחץ בדם הרשע, אומר דוד המלך, שהיה האיש הכי עדין בעולם. The only thing who can save us is to understand that this is our destiny, this, this is a divine war. It's how you win a war, you conquer the land of the enemy, or you kill the enemy. This is how you win the war. My name is Nati Rome, I'm a pioneer. I established a few of the communities here and I'm a lawyer. A pioneer, uh, what usually people call settler. Exactly. The first time we met, Nati Ram chose the place, the ancient city of Shiloh in the occupied West Bank. His choice was not accidental. Listen, we are in a historical place. We are here in Shiloh, 369 years. This was the first capital of Israel. Everywhere you dig here, you find history coins from the second temple time, from the first temple time. So of course, uh, uh, there is no such a thing called Palestine. Nadi Ram is a prominent figure in Hasbara, the Israeli public diplomacy strategy used to control the narrative and information manipulation. He travels around the world to spread the settlers' message. He brings groups of tourists from abroad to promote a favorable view of the settlements. Nadi Ram is also a lawyer. Another person that we interviewed is your colleague, Nadi Ram. Yeah. Colleague, yes, he's a lawyer. He's a lawyer, and and that is all that is uh, uh, saying uh, or um, shared by us. Most of his clients are members of the Hilltop Youth. Law enforcement on settlers, to the degree that it happens, is a is a theater, is a is a cosmetics. So, when Nati Rom needs to go to court, that is only because the government has to be able to say we're doing something about it, but without a real intention to do something about it. And that is why most of his clients end up with nothing, not even a slap on the wrist. The pioneers, the, what you call the youth of the hilltops are good people who follow the path of the Torah, of the Bible, and want to live here in peace. A few days after this interview, and after he cleared us, we were finally invited to his settlement, Esh Kodesh. What they call the heartland of Israel is, in fact, built on privately owned Palestinian land. Do you remember Duma? Do you remember the Palestinian family burned to death by settlers? The attackers came from this area, and they continued to descend the hill to attack Duma. I just want to explain to you that in the beginning, it was only this bus for the first two, three years. So plant vineyards in the mountains of Samaria. So it's written in the prophecies we shall plant vineyards in the mountains of Samaria. Yeah. And here we are in the mountains. When we started, nobody nobody even believed we have a chance to do something with it. This is an amazing a part of the sign of the redemption of the prophecies and uh, millions. More than millions all over the world believe in those prophecies and want to be a, a part of it. As much as the vineyard is suffering, the fruits and the wine is better. So hopefully Hashem will redeem us, that we will be better with, without suffering too much. Without Hashem. Listen, we have a promise from Hashem in the prophecy that the third redemption will be the eternal one. It's not again to go and back. So hopefully we are now in the eternal war. If you have to leave this land, will you fight back? But I will fight with everything I can to stop this decision, the stupid decision. It will bring more blood. More people will be uh, killed because of those stupid decisions. Oh!
איזה יופי, סוכר איזה יופי, סוכר He came to visit the soldiers guarding the hill overlooking Duma. It is clear who is in charge. Among the soldiers on this hill is a British citizen. But you have to be Israeli to serve in the army, no? You do and don't. There's a thing called lone soldiers, which are the other come from abroad and can be soldiers in the Israeli army. It's like the French Foreign League Legion. Nadi Ram, unaware of being recorded, explains to soldiers how he convinces tourists to support settlers. <laughs> Yehuda Shimon is one of the settler leaders in the northern part of the occupied West Bank. There is no settlers. There is a communities and there is a people, they just live like everybody, every place in the world. Do you see a Arab village or Arab city? There is a fence around? No, why? The Arabs know, everything go. And you know what? It's not just terror. This is a life way. That's the way they live. They kill all the time. If there is no Jewish, okay, let's kill each other. Okay, but we, we want to kill someone. Havat Gilad, the settlement where he lives, is part of a well-planned occupation. Building settlements in specific places which fragment areas of the West Bank so that it's impossible for Palestinians to have some kind of contiguity uh, and using that contiguity to build up what might one day be a, a state. You must to know something. Every Arab village, they are not legal here. We must to kill them. I couldn't see a way uh, that we could keep them alive. Deeply religious, the settlers follow the commandments to the letter. My name is Yoshua Mordechai Schmidt. You are a rabbi? Yes. The Torah said in the mitzvot that we must to be here and to build this place. I think that they should go Egypt, Jordan, Lebanon, Iran, Sudan, Qatar. A lot of uh, country uh, of Arabs. Why, why, why they stuck in Israel? Some of them came from Egypt, returned to Egypt. Some of them are friends of Erdogan, will go. Some will go to Britain. Some will go to North America, South America, Indonesia, which is the biggest Islam. But not here. Here they proved to be impossible in the, in the Middle East. We are moving from the northern occupied West Bank to the southern Hebron Hills. Accompanying us is former Israeli soldier Nadav Wiseman. And I joined the IDF in 2005. I served in the Special Forces. 
Yeah, me and my team were snipers, and inside the snipers team, everybody was snipers, and I was the spotter. It means that my job was to find the target. Do you feel any regrets from the time you were in the army? Of course. Uh, I did things that, as a democratic citizen, I think you're not supposed to do. I cannot fix what I did, but I can try to fix what is happening now. So we're driving on route number 60. It's the main road of the West Bank, it goes from north to south. And on our right-hand side, it's Hebron, the second largest Palestinian city in the West Bank. 230,000 Palestinians are living over there. Hebron is the only Palestinian city with a settlement inside of it. All of the different settlements are on hilltops, on valleys, on the outskirts of Palestinian cities. But in Hebron, you have a settlement of 650 settlers that are, most of them declare themselves, they are Kahanists. They believe in the ideological views of the Rabbi Meir Kahana. Basically, they believe in Jewish supremacy and they are very, very violent settlers. So I grew up in a settlement in the West Bank, in a religious, uh, very right-wing family. When I joined the army and I I was serving in Hebron. I didn't know anything else but the settler narrative and the narrative that I grew up on. fences and, and walls and, and soldiers everywhere uh, around the settlements. But these soldiers, they're not only defending the settlement. And it took me a lot of years later to realize that this is not normal. And it took me a lot of years to realize that Hebron is a Palestinian city the street uh, is closed for Palestinians. They're not allowed to walk on it. Uh, even Palestinians who live in this street, they are locked in their houses and they are not allowed to go through their front door and walk on this street. And that's for years now. You must keep them with the heads down and the situations of the house and to the entering house is one of the situations where you, you, you really get them without any chance to, to react. Suddenly you have 15 soldiers in your house uh, with weapons and everything and you just wake up and your children are screaming and crying. In Hebron is a, is a microcosmos where you, you can understand how the, the occupation happens in the other parts of the West Bank. If you had the chance, would you apologize to the people in Hebron? I would say it's an interesting question, and I never thought about it, but uh, uh, I wouldn't uh, bother to, to say to apologize. 
Tudo da Palestina. Tudo da Palestina, João. After the metropolis of Hebron will go down south, even more to the south, to the southernest point of the West Bank, uh, to an area that is called Masafariata. There is a couple of settlements and a lot of unauthorized outposts uh, here in the area, and a lot of settler violence along the years. So all of the Palestinians over here, if they want anything, to dig a new water system, to pave the road, to build a school, they need the authorization of the civil administration, the branch in the IDF that is in charge of all of the bureaucracy of the occupation. So Palestinians in sea territories, they just don't get building permits. And if they don't get building permits, they get demolition orders, right? Because everything they build over here is illegal. Then, the IDF come and demolish. So the first thing, by the way, the civil administration demolishes over here, in the South of Hills area, water systems and toilets. Toilets, yes, toilets. Because if you demolish the water system to a community in the desert, you don't need to demolish all of the things, right? All of the houses, all of the tents and caves, because they don't have water. They cannot live over here. And we don't want to put the uh, Palestinians on trucks like uh, uh, the photos from 1948. We want them to live by, by, themselves. by themselves, exactly. The Nuta used to be a Palestinian cave dwellers uh, village of between 200 and 300 people. And it's a village with, uh, with a school. They suffered attacks from settlers all of the time, all of the time, but also demolition of the civil administrations as well. About a month and a half ago, they left, after uh, they lived over here more than 100 years. Look at this, I don't know how to read Arabic, but uh, look at that panda, I'm guessing it was, uh, you know, on the wall. I don't know what it even says. By the way, look how much the community from Zanuta are afraid. They didn't come and take the school books or any of the tables, nothing. They just left and they're afraid to come back. But we will not be able to visit or film Zanuta. Someone wants us out of here. ואנחנו מבקשים אותם בבקשה להתקפל. הבנתי. למה יש לך מסכות על הפנים? כן, אתה מצלם אותי. אני לא בא לי שתצלם. חייב שתצלם אותי. מה? חייב שתצלם אותי. ישראל, וזה... דמגוגיה שאתה עושה פה... וזה נורא פה אתה חושב שאני לא מעם שלך? לא, אתה לא מעם שלי. אתה לא מעם שלי. חד משמעי, אתה לא מעם שלי. כן? זה מה שאתה אומר? חד משמעי. כחייל בצבא ההגנה לישראל, זה מה שאתה אומר עליי? חד משמעי. כן? אתה לא מעם שלי, נקודה. יש אסכול. He has a skull on his, uh, on his uniform. These guys are from which unit? It's a unit that they're called Agmar. Agmar, it's settlers' uh, units. It means that I'm a settler here, and then I put uniform, and now I'm a soldier over here. We moved far from Zanuta to interview Nadav, but the settlers sent someone to follow us. They are also army. Yeah, yeah. Also it's army. Ah, oh, it's army. Who are you? Alan, what do you need? What do you need? I'm going to ask you what you need. I don't know. I do אני שעושה בשבילך כמה שאני יכול כדי לשמור על הביטחון שלך. כמה שאני יכול. אבל עדיין, בכל זאת, אתה לא מבין שאנחנו אותו דבר. אבל שאני אבל... אנחנו שני מצרים. אוהב הלב שאתה... אבל אני ואתה... עושים לנו כל כך את התעמולה הרעה הזאת. The next morning, a Zionist pro-settler organization posted the video on social media 
labeling Nadav a traitor. Our journey across the occupied West Bank is coming to an end. But there's still something important to cover. We were invited to a closed door conference. We left Jerusalem, heading to Yavin, just a step away from Gaza. The main settler organizations are holding a conference near the border to select the first Jewish families to settle in Gaza. We are the only media invited to cover it. As we hear Israeli bombs falling on Gaza, they already discuss how much land each family will take and the destiny of the people of Gaza, the exile. That same night, while Gaza is relentlessly being erased, they took a boat with the first families, ready to occupy the land of those who are being killed and starved to death.